What are punctate and confluent lesions? And what difference do they make to our assessment and treatment? Sometimes radiologists use those terms in the radiology report, and sometimes we don't fully understand them. If we don't fully understand them, it means that we can't fully appreciate the lesion in the brain images because we don't know what we're looking at. If we can't look at the brain images and assess the lesions carefully, then we can't extract the information that is going to help us improve our assessment and treatment. In this video, I'll talk about punctate and confluent lesions. I will explain to you exactly what they mean and I'll explain the information they give you. I'll also use three examples to show you exactly how I use this information to modify my assessment and treatment. Both punctate and confluent are words that are used in the English language in general, not just for medical terms. Punctate means dot-like. Think of the word punctuation, in which you've got a, a full stop. Think of the word puncture, in which you've got a little hole in your tire. Confluent, on the other hand, refers to an area, a spread of over an area. And what you need to think about there is things like a stain or like a puddle. When you read about punctate or confluent lesions in the radiology report, I'd like you to think about three steps. Step number one is find. Step number two is evaluate. Step number three is locate. And let me explain more. The first step is to actually find in the images the lesions you read about in the radiology report. So if you read about punctate lesions, can you actually see all the punctate lesions that were discussed in the radiology report in the actual images? The second step is evaluate. And that's got to do with evaluating the lesions. So how many lesions are they? If it's a punctate lesion, how many punctate lesions are they? If it's a confluent lesion, how big is that confluent lesion? And is there only one or is there more than one? When you get to the third step of locate, you want to identify exactly where the lesions are. So if it's punctate lesions, where are they? Are they spread all over the brain? Are they in deep structures? Are they arranged in a particular order or in a, in a particular pattern? If it's a confluent lesion, is it affecting a particu particular anatomical structure or is it affecting several anatomical structures? Is it affecting multiple areas of the brain or just one area of the brain? Let me share with you three examples of how I use this system for assessing confluent and punctate lesions. So the first case is a stroke patient we treated in which the report was talking about confluent lesions related to the infarct and confluent lesions that were there pre-morbidly. And when you looked at the brain images, you could see that the confluent lesions related to the infarct affected the white matter and the gray matter, but wasn't that extensive. In fact, the confluent lesions that were there pre-morbidly were even more extensive and they were indicating that this person had underlying pathological processes that therefore limited their ability to recover and rehabilitate. In fact, this person did not recover as fast as we wanted them to and did not reach their pre-morbid capacity because of those background extensive pathological processes. The second example is of a lady who had MS and I was asked to consult on that particular case. The clinician was struggling because this person had exacerbation and then she had COVID and then she was bedridden for two weeks and then she couldn't walk anymore and the clinician wasn't clear whether she couldn't walk because of the MS or she couldn't walk because of the COVID. So I did what I always do. I look at brain images and what I could see was that there were multiple punctate lesions but there weren't that many of them and they weren't that big and they couldn't explain the extent of deterioration that the clinician was describing to me. And what it meant to me is that the person is probably losing function because of bed rest as a, and the illness, of course, as opposed to exacerbation of the MS, 
What it also means is that when I do my assessment, I expect to see some weakness in muscles, but I don't expect to see too many other neurological symptoms. So for this person, we could proceed with intensive treatment and we could push them harder. The third example is of a person that was diagnosed with functional neurological disorder. This was a young person and her main presentation was food dystonia. When I looked at the brain images of this person, I could see that she had punctate lesions that were atypical of her presentation and her age. And it prompted questions around, has she used drugs, recreational drugs perhaps? Is she taking any medications that could have caused that? And after further investigations with the GP, it became apparent that one of the medications she was taking was causing the dystonia. So in fact, she did not have functional neurological disorder. She had dystonia due to side effects of that particular drug. So I hope that you now understand punctate and confluent lesions really, really well, and that you understand why it's important to A, understand what they mean, B, look at the images and identify them, and C, localize them and match them with a clinical presentation. I also hope that this information changes how you understand your patient, how you assess your patient, and how you treat them. Please share this video with colleagues that you think could benefit from it, and I look forward to seeing you next time.